and I get a phone call from my friend, and he goes, I got an audition today. And I'm like, what the fuck, are you serious? He's like, yeah, yeah, I got an audition today. I, I, I don't know what the fuck, should I go? <laughs> and I'm like, well, he's in LA, right? So it's just three hour time difference, so it's around four o'clock his time. I'm like, yeah, go. He's like, yeah, well, you are. I don't, know if, you know, I don't know if I didn't prepare, I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, you know, I'm freaking out about Dom, who's a friend of ours who we couldn't find. Should I go? Should I go? I'm like, yeah, man, go. What the fuck? Go. What are you, are you an actor or are you not? He went, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm an actor. Right? Actor is how you define yourself. Not how a casting director defines you. Not how whether you book or not. It's about how you define yourself. So, he goes to the audition. He didn't prepare, maybe prepare five minutes. Didn't memorize the sides, didn't know what the fuck he was doing, but was so like in something else. So he gets a call back a week later, right? We're still looking for Dom. It's been a nightmare trying to find this guy. Turns out he's in a Jersey hospital, paralyzed, because debris hit him in the back and he's fucking knocked out, right? So we find him after a week, right? So I go into a Great Depression, literally. I go to my mom's place, I can't leave the fucking house, da, 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 right? So Dom, go, Dom calls me and goes, well, you know, I got a call back. And I'm like, and not Dom, my friend in LA, he's like, this calls me, he goes, I got a call back. I'm like, okay, he's like, but I don't know what to do, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't have time to prepare, I'm, 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 I'm fucked, you know, I'm really fucked, and I'm like, yeah, man, I know, it's all hitting you, you know, but you should go to the callback. It's like, I don't know, man, Carl, it's really, it's a little too much. Goes to the callback, and then, of course, the studio execs are sitting there in a huge row. And if you've ever been to a TV callback where you get for a series regular, you meet all the studio execs. All these suits are sitting there, and we call it the Senate, right? Because they look like a fucking Senate. Like, they look like a Senate, right? And they're sitting there, they don't know acting for shit. Don't know what the fuck they want, just are, you know, is he cute, right? Just turned on, that's all the fuck they think, right? So he goes and he's freaking out, because his agent didn't tell him that the, the Senate was gonna be there, right? So he's freaking out, so this is the guy, I think I told some of you in the class, that he learned before every audition, he has to masturbate. He has to whack off. He has to whack off and he has to ejaculate. He can't just beat it and stay hard. He's got to fully go that far. So he's in the bathroom and he's sitting there and he's like, this is how he came up with this idea. He's sitting there and he's like, Jesus Christ, I don't know what the fuck to do. So he looks down at his dick and he goes, you know, I'm hard. You know, got about five, ten minutes, you know. Starts beating off, right? Comes all over the door, walks out the fucking into the goddamn thing, and does the callback, right? This company co comes, dude, says, Carl, dude, I, I, I beat off before the audition. I was like, what do you mean beat off? What are you talking about? It's like, no, man, I whacked off and I came all over the door. I didn't clean it up. And I, I just freak it out, man. I, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. This is fucked, right? So then, of course, a week later, what happens? He gets another call. They want him in for a chemistry test, right? At this point, we found, of course, we found Dom. Dom is fucked up, right? It's one of his best friends. They actually, he actually moved from LA to New York. He's paralyzed from the waist down. Can't fucking move. So he's going fucking crazy. He's like, yeah, I finally talked to him. Dude, I'm not fucking prepared. I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm freaking out. I was like, dude, you gotta go to the callback, right? It's like, yeah, you know, it's just it's a chemistry test. It's with this girl. I don't know if they're gonna like me. You know, I, 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 I'm just, it's all too fucking much. Maybe I shouldn't go. I'm like, you're gonna fucking go. It's like, okay, okay, okay. I'm like, Dom, make sure you beat off before you get back in there. Not Dom, this is my friend. He's like, what? I'm like, dude, you, you came all over the door. Somehow that spray <laughs> gave you something to launch yourself into. I don't know what, I don't know how it happened. Da, da, da. He's like, you, you think I should beat off again? And he gets real quiet like a kid. Like, you think I should master <laughs> yeah. Go back in there again, man, fuck it. It's like, all right. 
So he goes, he says he goes, and now it's in the nice office. So now they're in the studio, right? He says there's grips, gaffers walking around, and he's sitting in the bathroom. He's like, oh, fuck, he can't get hard, right? Because he's freaking out. The nerves have him. So he's with Dick Sally, and he's sitting there going, what the fuck, right? So finally, he looks on his phone, and he starts going, okay, shit. Because at this time, you couldn't necessarily get internet on your phone, right? This is still 2001. You just had a Blackberry, right? So he's like, fuck. He runs into his car, drives to the nearest newsstand, buys a penthouse, comes back, goes back into the bathroom, beats it off, walks in. He goes, I was shit. I know it, man. I said, Jesus, I fucked it all up. Next week, he gets a phone call. What does the phone call say? You booked the job. <laughs> so, all of you who are freaking out, all of you who are worried about doing auditions right, all of you who think that you don't know what you're doing, who feel stupid, who feel like, oh my God, these sides are too fucking complicated, what am I going to tell you? Go jerk off. Go jerk off. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys want to remember, man, this is just your passion. If you make the audition more than what it actually is, it's just an audition. That's all it is. If you make it more, you will not get through the process of audition. And every actor, every fucking actor goes through the process of audition. Some longer than most, okay? And even if you're Nicolas Cage and did 10 fucking huge, shitty, horrifying Hollywood movies, he still had to go back and talk to Oliver Stone before he cast him in Stone. So it might never stop. It might never stop. So you have a choice. You can feel like a worthless piece of shit and be unprepared and fucked up and I don't know how to see it. Or you can go fuck it. Let me just go in there and follow through with my passion. And that's the first understanding of this workshop that you want to get. So part of the understanding of this is to go, everything that I learn in this class is specific and specific only to auditioning. It is not specific to anything else. Why do you think you need a separate process for the audition? Because it's different. What do you mean? What do you mean? What? Say that again. You don't have the time. Now, sometimes, ask Dr. Channing. She got a call for the West Wing the day before they ran her on set. Wow. Ran her on set. Gave her the two pages. She had to create a fucking relationship with Martin Sheen on set to be his wife. So, so you know, sometimes you don't have time. You don't have the time. Yeah, but you don't have the time after she pushed in an audition for it. Honey. They just gave it to oh. her. <laughs> so sometimes you don't have the time. Okay, partly. So you're not actually in what the whole scene is about, right? Number one. What's another reason? Because it's not about you. What do you mean? Like they need to see you. Right? Okay, yeah, they're, they're, they're there to see you anyway, right? Like even if you have given a part, they, they want you for the part. But it's you, it's you in the scene, not you and the other person. Oh, right, right. That's what he's saying. Yeah, the circumstance in the entirety is not going to be present for you, right? Why else? There's a difference between the craftsmanship and then the structure that you need for the audition. Why? Because uh, one is art and the other one is packaging the art to make sure that you show Not packaging it, but you're being what? Okay. Evaluated. Oh, right, right, right. Evaluated. That's the killer, is you're being evaluated. And when you get into that sense, as actors, as all actors do, we get where? Where do we go? Where is evaluation? Absolutely, to our head. And in going to our head, when we have been judged or evaluated in any way, shape, or form, what do we try to do as human beings? Prove. Prove. What else do we try to do? Show. Show. What else do we try to do? Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> so get it right becomes the priority, right? So every audition technique that has worked, you have to find a way to get beyond getting it right. Now that is a tough load to carry. Why? Why is that a tough load to carry? Because how do you know what's right? 
Well, okay. Okay, sure. You, you, you'll never know what it's right because no one's going to fucking tell you, right? And even if you're my friend and looking at the door that he just ejaculated on, you're still thinking that you're a piece of shit fuck up because you didn't prepare in the right way. Because you didn't set up yourself to have the time in the right way. But there's something else. Why is it the tough load to carry with getting it right? What are you trying to do? Well, why would you not try to be yourself? I mean, you read it. It's your interpretation. Therefore, you're being the character. So why would you be yourself? You're in the world of results. Huh? The world of results. The results. Uh, it's the fucking result. We all need what as actors? Validation. Validation. We are desperate for it as artists. So then part of the, part of the job is the, of the audition is to get so far beyond that, so far away from the understanding of results and right or wrong, that you allow yourself to be present. Okay? Now we have a trick here at the Susan Batson Studio to get present. What's our trick? I'm aware. I'm aware, right? So if I'm not present, can any of my homework show up? Can any of my creative choices show up? Can any of my charisma show up? Any of my sense of humor show up? Any of my sexuality show up? So when I approach the script, if I sit there and just go like this, sit down and be good boy, because good boy tells me I do my homework by my desk, and I get my coffee, and I sit by my desk, and I'm going to get this fucking script. And I'm a good boy. So can I, from that starting point, start seeing the scene? No. Now, can I, from that starting point, start having my creativity work for me? Now, can I start visualizing where and what is actually happening? Now, so what happens when we start from this place? Good boy. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do my homework. Because mm -hmm. I want a gold star. Right? What happens from this point? Well, worse than flop. What happens? Go to your head. Well, even worse than that. Go to your head. You could make some creative choices, right? You can, you can work yourself, George. Tell them. You can work yourself to death. <laughs> this motherfucker right here works himself to death. Eight, nine hours. Like he's in Russia in 1927, <laughs> and there's a storm coming. <laughs> and he knows I have no more wheat! <laughs> and I have no more water! <clears throat> and then he'll work himself again! Right? So then you're sitting in your preparation in the room doing what? I have to connect to the mead. <laughs> I have to find the mead. Susan told me there's a mead and I must find it. Because if I do not find it, what's going to happen? I will fuck up! I will fuck up! Get my fuck up, Nikki! What's going to happen? I will never work ever again! And mom and dad were right. <laughs> they were absolutely right. Right? So then you keep pushing yourself and pushing yourself. And you put a gun to your head. Because at some point, since you started from here, like a good little girl and boy, when you get to actually doing it, what happens? You have to do certain things. You have to maintain certain things. You have to have certain things. And in this have to, the minute we say have to as an actor, what happens to our creativity? Dies. Dies. What happens to being able to listen to the casting director? What happens to the option of asking a question? No, I can't ask any questions. I must know. <laughs> I must know this. This is how I work. Right? So if I start, this is how quickly the audition starts. The audition starts when you get the pages. That's when the audition starts. The audition does not start in the room. The room is the last phase. It starts when you get the paper. So if you don't get the paper and get into your crazy little child self, what ends up happening when you come in the room? 
It might be good. It might be interesting. But will it be dynamic? Will it be you? Will it be creative? So this is not about doing it right. This is not about your own assessment of what is right or wrong. Because if you're not the producer, you have no idea what the casting director is looking for. So you're sitting there trying to read minds, trying to figure things out, instead of go, let me read this like a kid. Let me open up my imagination and see this, see what is actually happening in the circumstance. And then from seeing it, then I can make a bridge to my intimacy, whatever that bridge may be. But I gotta see it first. Because if I can't tell a story from this page, I don't look professional. I'm not going to show up. And they're automatically, in every audition, there's a sense of pressure. You're never going to get over that. You're never going to get over that. Especially the bigger and bigger and bigger the audition. Okay? And then, even worse, when it's a studio or a big, big Hollywood film, you go through eight or nine callbacks, and you still don't know. Okay? When it's a TV series regular, you're literally meeting the network execs who don't know shit about acting. Most of the casting directors you run to, run into, have no idea about acting. No idea. They only can see what your choices were and whether you told a story and what you look like. And that only happens by an acceptance, a freedom, and a sense of creativity. Okay? And this is why your audition technique has to be completely different than your actual technique. And it's tough to learn. It's really difficult to learn. But it starts the minute you get the page. Okay? Don't think it begins later. Think of it as the minute I get that fucking page, the audition is started. Okay? So I can approach it like it's math homework, and God bless you and good luck. Or I can approach it like it's a creative art form. It is entirely up to you. Most people I tell never sit at a desk. Get up, listen to music, dance, freak out, use what your ex or actor did, talk to yourself, do all the parts. Be that free, because that's how quickly you can open yourself up to the material, instead of shutting yourself down, trying to be right, and trying to get results. How come little kids can get the five W's for any story like this? How come they can get it that fast? What don't they have? They don't think. They don't have a need to get it right. Mm -hmm. They sit there and they go, once upon a time, once upon a time, yeah. there was a prince, oh, he's tall, he's got blonde hair. Do you know? <laughs> they jump that fast because they know automatically, because kids are way smarter than we are, they know automatically that it requires an imagination to see something. And it requires an investment in that imagination. And that's how we really get over the right or wrong. Because even when we're sitting in the door, when we're waiting for our name to get called, sitting in a little casting office, what runs through us? Well, I gotta get this fucking right, I gotta be more perfect with the fucking script, 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 and if there's not an acceptance of that, a full, full acceptance and surrender to that understanding, then you lose any technique. So then you don't come in and learn it and throw it away. Right? I always tell people, how do you tie your shoes? Well, I, that's a tricky question. I don't know. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, how do you do it? Yeah, it takes a minute to sit on that, right? Well, you learned it, and then you did what? Forget it. How'd you read? You learned what? The alphabet. And then you did what? Practice. You did. <laughs> I didn't practice. I learned the alphabet. Someone gave me a book. I was like, oh, cat. C-A-T. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go, oh, A, B, C, D, oh, let's see. No. <laughs> right? You run it, run it, run it. And then someone gives you a book, and you put the letters together, and then you're guided through it. Right? You're guided through the sounds of it. You're guided through verb, noun, da 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 but you learn all that shit, and then you do what? Forget it. Forget it. If I thought about how I read when I read, what's going to happen? I'm going to be illiterate. 
I'm going to be, you, it's going to be, these letters are going to confuse me. So I have to, at some point, go. There's a way in which I can trust. And that trust only comes from a create creative space. Because this is a creative art form. Okay?